Welcome to a screencast on solubility. The objectives for this screencast are to describe the effect of temperature on solubility and to interpret solubility graphs. And an example of a situation where this occurs would be something like sugar as a solute dissolving in coffee as a solvent or water as a solvent if you prefer. Well, if you have a um, morning cup of coffee and you like to add sugar to it, you know that uh, you can add sugar to the coffee and it will dissolve. But of course, you can't add an infinite amount of sugar to a small amount of coffee. At some point, uh, you add more sugar and you just build up some sludge in the bottom and no more sugar will dissolve. So for any given set of conditions, a particular solute like sugar, and a particular solvent, say coffee or the hot water in coffee, if you add enough solute to the solvent, eventually you get what is called a saturated solution. And a saturated solution means that the maximum solubility has been reached. For a given amount of water, that's how much, let's say, sugar can dissolve in that amount of water. Uh, here's a chemical example of this. If you dissolve an ionic compound, a one-to-one -one stoichiometry ionic compound in water, if it's a somewhat soluble compound, you throw a little bit in, it dissolves, throw a little more in, continues to dissolve, more yet, still dissolves. But then if you add more beyond the point at which it's saturated, then additional ionic compound does not separate into ions in solution. It just stays clumped together uh, on the bottom of the container. Now, what happens when this takes place is the solution ends up being in what we call equilibrium, and actually specifically, it's a dynamic equilibrium. And the example we're looking at here, uh, let's be specific, it's a one-to-one -one stoichiometry ionic compound, uh, and this one happens to be potassium chloride. So we have potassium ions represented by this sort of tannish colored sphere. We have chloride ions represented by the greenish colored sphere. Some of them are dissociated from each other, dissolved in solution, surrounded by water molecules. And then if we have enough uh, potassium chloride, some of it is piled up in the bottom and solid form. We have a double arrow indicating that we formed some K plus and Cl minus ions separately, but we also have some KCl uh, solid that isn't separate. And the double arrow indicates that the uh, reaction or dissolution process can go in both directions. And there, of course, we have the uh, together potassium chloride solid represented in the bottom of the container. Okay, so let's take a little closer and more uh, animated descriptive look at this via a FET simulation. And here we have a container of water, very small amount of water. We have 1 times 10 to the minus 16th liters of water. And we're going to add some strontium phosphate to it. And this is an ionic compound, and these sort of pinkish-purple spheres are going to represent strontium ions, and greenish spheres are going to represent phosphate ions. We have some of this compound in the shaker, and so we shake a little bit out, and the ionic uh, solid, the crystals of that, uh, dissolve in water. And we can see positive ions and negative ions moving around throughout the solution, lots of water molecules which aren't shown here. Uh, are surrounding them. And if we shake in a little bit more strontium phosphate, that dissolves as well. Keeps on doing what it just did. Throw in a little bit more. And this time we have a fair amount of the strontium phosphate staying together as, a, uh, as an ionic solid, as crystals, and now if we focus on this, you might notice that the number of strontium phosphate ions that are in solid form remains basically constant. But at any given instant, you can see some ions 
attach onto the crystal in different locations while at the same time other ions separate off from it. And we'll add a little bit more just to uh, kind of emphasize the point. And that doesn't dissolve either. It falls to the bottom uh, as a sort of clump of solid. But if you watch carefully, you'll notice this is not a static clump of solid. The numbers of ions in the solid form stays the same, but individual ions move in and out of solution. And this is what we mean by dynamic equilibrium. Okay, so here is our uh, static image of a solution once again. And uh, a question that might come up is, is there anything we could do for a given solute and a given solvent to change the solubility? And you're probably thinking, yeah, I know what we could do to change the solubility. We could heat it up or cool it down. And yes, you're right. The factor that has the biggest effect on solubility of a given solid uh, solute in a specific solvent uh, is going to be temperature. We can cool the solution down or we can heat the solution up and we would expect we would get more or less of the solute to be able to dissolve in a given amount of solvent. Now let's take a look at uh, this temperature versus solubility relationship for a specific compound. And uh, in this case, temperature is our independent variable. Solubility depends upon temperature, so it's our dependent variable. And it's fairly typical to do solubilities in grams of solute per 100 grams of solvent. And in this case, our solvent is water. And we'll use copper sulfate as our solute. And if you have zero degree Celsius water, it turns out you can get about 15 grams or so of copper sulfate to dissolve in 100 grams of water. With 20 degree water, you can get just barely over 20 grams of copper sulfate to dissolve in that amount of water. For 40 degree Celsius water, you can get about 30 grams or so of copper sulfate to dissolve. At 60 degrees Celsius, you can get slightly more than 40 grams to dissolve. At 80 degrees Celsius, you can get a little under 60 grams of copper sulfate to dissolve. And at 100 degrees Celsius, you can get just barely more than 80 grams of copper sulfate to dissolve in 100 grams of water. And there is the relationship uh, shown graphically between temperature and solubility. Uh, now, a couple things to note. For copper sulfate, uh, as the temperature goes up, the solubility goes up. So uh, there's an increasing relationship there between temperature and solubility. But also note, it's not linear. Uh, it's possible for a particular compound to have a temperature solubility graph that is linear, but this particular compound does not. And there's no reason to think it has to be uh, a linear relationship in general. Now, also worth noting, all points on this line represent for a given temperature the maximum amount of copper sulfate that can dissolve in 100 grams of solution at that particular temperature. So if we go to, let's say, 50 degrees Celsius, then we can see that something like maybe 30 plus, 35-ish grams of copper sulfate uh, would be able to fully dissolve at that uh, temperature. If we go to 70 degrees Celsius, then we're into the roughly 50 grams of copper sulfate that can dissolve in 100 grams of water. Now note, any point below this line is going to correspond to not enough copper sulfate uh, to reach the maximum solubility and any point above this line is going to correspond to too much copper sulfate to reach maximum solubility. So let's kind of put this stuff together. First of all, as the temperature increases, the solubility usually increases. In this case, it certainly does. And if we are on the line, we've got the maximum solubility just barely. If we're below the line, we have 
not enough copper sulfate in this case to uh, reach sol the maximum solubility. So we say the solution is unsaturated. And above the line, we have more than enough. So the solution is saturated. Uh, and sometimes we uh, would also say it's super saturated, maybe more on that at some point down the road. Now, one other thing to note is the temperature increase leads to a solubility increase most of the time, but we should be a little careful about that because here is a graph of solubility versus temperature for a number of different substances. And if you look carefully, sugar, potassium nitrate, sodium nitrate, sodium bromide, etc., these all have increasing graphs as the temperature goes up, the solubility goes up, but some of them, the increase is pretty small, like let's say sodium chloride, and for cerium sulfate, notice it's not that case. As the temperature goes up, the solubility actually decreases. Uh, for solids, this is unusual, but it can happen, so be careful. And that is it for the solubility screencast.